Okay, so in this Android Studio tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create this web view. And I'll show you a secret, uh, not really a secret, but a piece of code that prevents the user from exiting it when they click on the back. Here you can see it triggers a toast message, and if they click it twice, it goes back, and then I'll show you exactly also how to make it so they can't exit the app, although you really don't want to do this probably. So the first thing you want to do is go to your Android manifest file and add the permission user permission, android permission dot internet. And this just allows them to browse the internet within the app. Then you'll go to your main activity or you'll create a new activity and you'll make a new empty activity. I just called it main to activity as the default. Then we'll go to our main activity and change our text view to a button. We're gonna wanna give it an ID. I named it button one just to keep it simple. And we're gonna say open web view so we understand what is going to happen. Then we want to define the button. And then we're going to want to initialize it by writing button equals find view by ID r dot ID dot button one. And we're gonna set an on click listener for our new button. And here we're gonna create a new intent by doing intent intent equals new intent. We use the main activity as the context and we're gonna pass main to activity the class as the activity we want to enter. Then we do start activity and we write intent inside. Then we'll go to our second XML and create a web view and assign it an ID. We're gonna to want to match the parent so it just fills the whole screen view. And we'll go immediately to our second activity and write web view, web view, and initialize it by doing web view equals find view by ID r.id web view one or the ID that you assigned it. Then we're gonna write webview.setWebViewClient equals new webview client just to make it show up and we're gonna do webview.load URL and you can put whatever URL you prefer but I just put uh, Google to start it. Then we're gonna overwrite on back press just by typing on back press you'll see an option that lets us override it. And we're gonna write if webview.can go back then we'll write webview go back else it's gonna trigger the original on back pressed, which will exit the app. So what this essentially does is make sure that the app goes back within the web view instead of just exiting. And here's a toast just to show you exactly what's going on as we do it in lifetime. Soon I'll show you the finished product and you'll understand a lot better. But these toasts just make it super clear. The super back on press is the original back press, which exits. And as you can see here, I just created another toast and deleted the super dot on back pressed. And what this essentially does is remove the original function of the on back pressed, making it very hard for the user to exit. I would not recommend doing this on a professional app, but it's always good to know that you can do this if you would prefer to do this. That's just a neat hint or a neat tip on using web views in case you don't want the user to actually exit the app every time they click go back. So if they go on images and they click back within the app, it will just go one page back inside the app. And that's essentially all there is to creating this web view. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Otherwise, uh, see you in the next video.